the right games, played by the right people, we will do things differently and understand things differently. I've been leading research projects in Central Africa for the last five years, trying to identify what the future has in store for the people, the institutions, and the ecosystems in the region. Now, when a scientist talks about the future, most people expect predictions. That's not what I do. I'm not interested in what will happen. I'm interested in what can happen and how we make it happen. I want to shape the future, and I want to help people shape their future too. So how do we do it? You actually know the answer, because you do it every day. When you plan your holidays, or when you order a tiramisu in the restaurant, that's what you're doing. You're making a decision that will change your future. And you take that decision based on what you think will happen, and how much you value what you think will happen. It's all about expectations and values. But it gets trickier when instead of thinking your next move, you try to anticipate and try to think 10 steps, 100 steps ahead. And it's a bit like playing chess. But how do you play if you don't see all the pieces or if you're wearing a blindfold? What happens if you don't know all the rules or if the rules keep changing? It would be very useful to have a board. It would be very useful to have the pieces, to have the capacity to try out your next move and see what happens. In short, you need a model, a description of how things work, to be able to try out different strategies. That's what we did. We developed models describing how things work in the Congo Basin, at the village level, at the regional level. But that was not enough, because we were missing a crucial ingredient, and that is how people make decisions. Because we live in the Anthropocene, and that means that what happens to the planet is by far the result of our decisions, yours, mine, and theirs. And we have no equation that captures that. We have no algorithm that is able to represent the capacity of human beings to create innovation, to surprise, sometimes to act stupidly. We have no such tools. So what we did is that we transformed our, our models into games, and we invited people to play with us. And that's what's radically different. Because when a player joins and sits at the table, he or she becomes part of the model. And she is bringing with her her knowledge, her values, and more importantly, that capacity to understand. You all know this rush when things suddenly make sense, when things get a new meaning, and all the innovation that will stem out of that inspirational moment. What does it look like, you're wondering? Follow me. I'm taking you to Africa. We're going to Cameroon. We're specifically going to the village of Ampel. It's there. So you have to imagine hours on that dirt track road with a tall green forest of Central Africa on either side. And you have the logging trucks passing you by and all the red mist that covers everything. We spend days, weeks, some of us months in these places, gathering data, getting to know the people, asking questions about what do they do and why do they do it. And one day we're ready, and we invite people to play. And it looks like this. Here you see two tables representing two villages far away from each other. On each table, a board that represents the forest, and you recognize the road in the middle. And the players play their own roles. Through the game, they will be opening fields, they will decide to go hunting, to go collecting food. Maybe they will sell their goods to the market. Maybe they will strike agreements with their neighbors. It is a difficult game. You need to be fast. You need to be smart. You need to negotiate agreements with the others. 
and you need maybe to be a bit lucky also. But they know how to play. After all, it's a game about what they do. But then we went to one of these tables and we told the players, there is a big dam that is going to be built. The entire valley is going to be flooded. So you need to leave. You need to leave everything behind. And just like that, these players, they've lost everything they spent hours building. Their fields, their plantations, everything is gone. And they need to relocate to that other table that is already full, where the players already had agreements and built trust and negotiated and, and shared access to everything. And for these players, it's the other side of the story because they see a flood of migrants coming to their village. So the first moments are, are quiet. Nobody's talking too much. But when they see the newcomers opening fields in their land, hunting in their forest, they will start questioning, what are you doing here? And then they will realize what's going on. And then emotions will take over. And they stand up and they start shouting, but what are you doing? This is my forest, this is my land. You have no right being here. And the others, they have no bargaining power. So they use their hands. They, We've lost everything, we are brothers. You need to help us. When this thing happens, me and my team, we disappear, we go backstage. Because we want to make sure that the participants experience this fully. And it is something to behold, the emotions and, and how this drives us. I would like you to understand that this is not something that happens only in a remote village, in a traditional society. Play is part of the human experience. We're all very good at that. And the same games will have the same effect if I play it in the university in Zurich or in the offices in Bonn or in Brussels. And no matter how good a TED speaker I am, or how passionate I feel about this, there is something I cannot convey to you. You can hear me talking about how this is amazing, but you don't know what it feels like. And it's a bit like, it's a bit like diving. I can tell you everything there is to know about diving. I can describe how the lights turn blue when you go deeper. Until you dive, there's something you will be missing, and that is the experience of diving, what it feels like diving. And here is the same. Until you play, you can only trust the participants that tell you that it, this is amazing, and you can only trust me who says in a TED talk that this is great. You need to live through the experience. But then, the most magical thing happens, because out of the blue, one of the players will, will take from his pocket a piece of rope. It's actually this one. And he'll say, okay, listen, this is our land, but you're welcome. However, there are boundaries. And he will put this on the board. And he, was, he will start saying, okay, this is, you cannot cross that line. You're welcome to use what's here on the left, but don't go into what's on the, on the right. And then the others, they will chip in. They will start saying, okay, hang on, this is my land but they are welcome to use that one, or how much are you willing to pay for that? And, and they will start negotiating agreements, and then they will all relax, and they will sit back, and they will smile, because they have found one solution to a very tough problem. And this is only the beginning. David Krokal, a, coll a colleague of mine, says, learning begins when the game is over. And it is true, because after the game is done, we discuss, and the participants, they share the things they understood and the things that still puzzle them. They share what the strategies that work and those that failed. And that's when everybody starts connecting the dots, and they realize the things they should have known or they could have done better. And we learn in the process too, because they can tell us, yes, this is what it feels like being a farmer in Cameroon. Or maybe they tell us this is what it feels like being a CEO in a logging company. Or maybe they say no. No, that's not exactly how it feels like because you've missed this important element and this doesn't work like that. When they say that, we can change the models, we can change the games, and we also learn. There is something for everybody here to learn. 
So, games are powerful and inspirational. They create emotions and they, they are a great tool for understanding. But that's not enough, because we need change. But for change to happen, I only need one more thing. I told you in the beginning, the right people playing, decision makers playing. We're all decision makers. You take decisions. Farmers take decisions. CEOs and presidents take decisions. If the people making decisions go through the same process, experience the same emotions, gain the same understanding, they will take decisions differently. And now I have seen a few of you smiling, saying, yeah, right, invite my CEO for a, for a game. That doesn't work. Well, it does, because we've done it. For two years, sorry, four years now, the Forest Stewardship Council, one of the biggest certification bodies for forest, has been engaged in a discussion on how to manage intact forest landscape, the last places on Earth without roads. It's incredibly important as a discussion in terms of ecology, economy, and for the livelihood of the communities that live there. Mathieu Auger Schwarzenberg, the director of the program for the Congo Basin, organized a discussion, a negotiation process between the governments, the logging companies, the representatives of the local communities, and the conservation NGOs about how to deal with these intact forest landscapes in the Congo Basin. Twelve negotiators, two years of discussion with experts, with databases, with maps, and they couldn't agree. We invited and we offered Mathieu the opportunity to use one of our games, the regional one. And he said, OK. And he convinced the negotiators to play the game. We did that last summer in Brazzaville. And we had three days. This is the game we used. And on the first day, we told the negotiators, forget everything you've been discussing so far, just play the game. And for one day, they played. On the second day, they discussed, we discussed, and they established links between the things they knew, the things that they had lived through in the game, and the things they were negotiating. And on the third day, they drafted the agreement, and they voted. In three days the right people playing with the right game, with facilitation, and a bold leader able to invite them, we have changed the rules for the Congo Basin, for the management of the forest of the Congo Basin. You know that we live through a critical moment. We have 10 years to operate a transition that is difficult, and we have not been able to operate so far. This is a message I want you to take home. We have found one way to find a way. It's not about forcing people to do things. It's not about manipulating them, but empowering them to take the right decisions. It's only the beginning. Everything still needs to be done afterwards, but at least you're on your way. So I dare you, come and play.